I think we're, oh, we're recording already. I think I pressed it early just in case, just so we could see John come in so excitedly. <laughs> there it is. That's what I was looking for. I am. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I'm giddy because I got, I got a little secret. I got a little plan. Something that uh, yay. Put together the last second. I want to start out with. Uh, <laughs> you, what are you, Shaq? Now fixing the. I just started doing life for our ass. I got another thing up for Muhammad. <laughs> By the way, Shaq will be in the second half of this episode. Frame it. What? <laughs> Frame it. My background. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. I don't know how much Toledo's keeping it. We recorded it like uh, in 1995 or so, and we're <laughs> playing it back at the end of this, um, which is great because he's been a little bit more in the news, too. Uh, but he was messing around with the camera so much at the beginning, it completely threw me off. Nothing throws Holmberg off. He just starts asking questions in the middle of it. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> Every day. Um, but uh, so I put out that viral video this week, and it drove me a little crazy because I spent two hours on it, the coach's video. And uh, sometimes the voiceovers will take me five or six hours, and they'll get a couple – hundred thousand hits or something or views or whatever and then i pieced together this uh mini costumes some stuff i had just sitting around whether it was hats mustaches or wigs which everybody should have hats mustaches and wigs just who doesn't it. and it just went crazy and i didn't expect it and then some of the complaints were why did you have some of the stuff why did you have a mustache and a hat for Andy Reid, but for Sean McVay, you just wore a regular shirt? And my answer was, there's a pandemic. That's why. <laughs> I only have certain things, jackass. So uh, the, I, sell, the sell for me on the whole video, though, is how quick you turn back into Fat Frank as Andy Reid. It's amazing. You put on 80 pounds it's, with it's, one muscle. It, it's weird how I can sink back and I keep saying, I just have this pancakey face. I don't know. It's pancake it's batter, incredible. but it's, I have some older video of me where I'm probably 20 pounds, pounds, light pounds right now. I've got a couple of pounds lighter and I'm like, crap, I got to get back to that. Cause you, even though the cheeks are a little fat still, you can tell I'm thinner and I want to get back to that level of fatness as opposed to where I currently am. Are clowns part of the pandemic? I mean, I, I didn't see that in the video, but our clowns, I, I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You know how it all fits together in, the, in this. Uh, my, Frank, my favorite, there. my favorite comment under it was like, why didn't you do Sean McDermott of the Buffalo Bills? I'm like, I don't even know what he sounds like. I have no clue. It's, it's like a, obscure coaches. It's really weird, the people they, they wanted me to do. And the, some people had good suggestions, like for Adam Gase, which was just eyes that, like, put on a hat. I'm like, I just didn't have the stuff. And I, it's hard to fake a hat and just write jets on it because you're not going to see it anyways. But then maybe it, I should have just had the hat on because you're not going to see it anyways. Also, how about this, morons? Uh, it's funny. What Frank did was funny. He doesn't need a fucking hat to be Adam Gase. The joke was great. Get over yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things where I just had what I had. I wish I would have had full things. Then I got a text from somebody about my parcels, which I'd forgotten I'd done. And okay, oh. okay, okay. Oh, I care. I'd forgotten I even did it. Okay, so good. Uh, and I didn't present it as new, but I uh, kind of attached it to that tweet. And then people are going crazy ape shit for that. Yeah. And I'm telling people one by one, this is older. Uh, you know, it's not new. They're like, how did you get all the makeup and wardrobe? I'm like, it's older. It's not new. <laughs> See, here's what's but, frustrating to me. You'll do the parcels, and let's say you do put on a Giants hat. People will be like, you know, the last, the last time you coached, it wasn't the Giants. <laughs> they don't, they miss everything. So I, I get upset that how good a lot of the stuff was and what people miss. I couldn't read comments. I don't know how you do it. Reading the comments would make well, me I, so annoyed. I mute uh, all the people who don't follow me. So that puts a lot of people out there. Yeah. Uh, they don't they don't get in then they're sifted through yeah um, i only want the bad comments i don't care about the good ones that's fine i want well, the, the idiots to reveal themselves yeah the good ones roll off and you just go thanks kind of a thing to be right. nice the bad ones you're just they 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 dwell inside of you for a little bit and then you go ah, you don't know whatever it's just yeah. i'm trying to just make people laugh so then jamie fox does that video that goes viral with him explaining how to do some impressions, which is what we do all the time here. 
right? Yeah. We constantly are talking about that. So then people are sending that to me going, have you seen this genius? I go, he's an incredible actor. He's, a, he's really good at impressions. But we talk about that stuff constantly. Yeah. If you're really a fan and you follow, listen to the podcast. I'll be right back. Yeah, handle it. Evidently, however. the mystery's been solved. <laughs> like it's old man Carruthers. I like, <laughs> I like John's jog out of there too. Just yeah, it looks good. It looked like a uh, he kind of looked like a third base coach. Yeah, John, how I, I had to skip around two pairs of shoes. And John, a, and you run a table, so you, you run like a thirty-five-year-old. You run yeah. a decade younger. Then you're, you know, your actual. I'm feeling pretty bouncy right now. I just, just had a nap, so I'm feeling good. Mm. So John and yeah. I also go back and forth constantly about how much stuff we we'll talk about things because I was I was proud of that video, that coach's video, but at the same time I'm like, it was kind of easy. I, I I put it together so simply. I just I didn't write it out ahead of time. I just did three or four bits, and then pieced them together. And it, I, I went back and forth editing it. Some I spent the most time on Sean McVay because I didn't have that voice 100%. I just wanted to get something good enough that I could put out. And um, and it just, it just, it, when it went crazy though, it just threw me. I, I was like, I expected it to do decently, and if it hadn't done decently, I was going to quit Twitter and everything else for a while. <laughs> because to do all the costume change that you know half costume changes, I'm like, this is embarrassing if this doesn't work. And so the frustrating like, thing is, though, you call it easy, but what you're doing is easy to you. Um, I think it's I don't think it's easy. I think the difference is it wasn't written effort editing. It seems easy to you. People eating it up. It's not easy. And, I, you know, you have to guard against that when you're good yeah. at something like you are. But the frustrating thing is how hard you worked on a few other things that right. should be just monumentally great. It's your princess bride. Rob Reiner always says princess right. bride was nonstop work. And I had so much heart and soul into it. And when critics kind of said, Meh, it drove him crazy. But it was when my end they, game, my end game with Juliet, yeah. which is my favorite oh, thing I've done. And so, so well put together. And even the uh, Christmas thing with Jose, where we did, he, he did all the animation and it was incredible. And then people, like the the big fat my face on the screen and do more with that than the animation I'm like no watch this whole thing this is really well done so that stuff but john and i just go back and forth complaining about everything that that jamie fox thing came on and it drove me nuts because then everybody's sending that to me and i'm going i know we we talk about this constantly um and i didn't i just and, and that's when i have to just turn it off for a little while yeah it's 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 hearing too much of your audience on their walk to the car after a show. You just, you just, <laughs> you just you either know you had a good show or you didn't. If you, if you were cursed with the ability to hear your audience all night long, talk about it, you'd go mad. And that's why social media is, I can't, I, I, I firmly have my fingers placed on the kneecap of society when it comes to social media. I don't understand why you want to know. I don't understand why anybody thinks what they're doing is interesting enough to put it up there. I, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm the one on the wrong side of this. But man, if, as far as you and putting things out for entertainment purposes, I would have to rely on the fact that like, I either know this is good or it's not. And I'm the only one that can matter right now because otherwise I've got too many people in my head. It's like when, when uh, Morgan Freeman and Batman had all the phones. There was just a <laughs> cacophony of sounds and you'll pick up all the ones you don't want to really hear and it would make you crazy. So just know it's good. And I, I try not to understand it because five million is that where it's at the the one you yeah, did right. four point eight million I can't get Unreal. five million without pushing it. Unreal, uh, I, and it's something you feel like eh, I, I could do this probably in my sleep every time there's an NFL thing. Yeah, and I hate to cut you off about um, especially when you're talking about how great I am, but I got a <laughs> I got an advertiser for the show, oh, uh, no. a law firm. Yes, and uh, he he had to come in and be a part of it, so. Oh my God! Is this real? <laughs> well, hello, greetings. I, I wanted to say thank you first of all because it's it, it it honors me so much that I get to sponsor such a prestigious show. And I wanted to remind you all that the lawyers in love who love lunch will be going on this coming Wednesday. I will be the keynote speaker. And if you want to get your tickets, you can send your Visa card directly to me at any point you wish. Remember, lawyers who love love lunch, and those who love lunch love lawyers. <laughs> Is this a Vimeo or is that real? No, is this is real. Is it a video? It's a video. Oh, wait a, a second. Vimeo, Vimeo, Vimeo. What do they call those things? 
am I on a sports show? I'm on a sports show. No way. First of all, you've got the best color in town. That's the only color to have. I'll show you how much I love that color. Let's see. Let's, uh, what, a, what other color do we have here? Uh, oh, how about, there you go. How about some Hemlindigo blue? There you go. Perfect. We're going to be in Hemlindigo blue from here on out. But he, he's got lines for his shacks. Look, he's going. <laughs> uh, I'm almost tearing up for John's, uh, John's emotional. Return, John, return. So John, come back. Please come look back. What, look, what, look what I just got today. You did not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. This is, I don't get starstruck or annoyed by this, but you, sir, are a legend in this house. A oh. legend. Oh. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. This thing, now, the, tell, tell me how this ends, because you guys won't be, you won't be done for another year and a half, and if I die before this ends, I'll <laughs> haunt you know, all of you. I, I don't know how it ends, and uh, if I knew, uh, I, I probably wouldn't have a job. They don't tell me anything. Look, I don't know if you've noticed, the show's called Better Call Saul, not Better Call Howard. What are you, my mother? I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> but in the background, it's not Better Tell Howard. He, we can trust Howard. Well, I don't think so, unfortunately. Here's the thing. I want to know. Obviously, I want to know. First of all, I'm just glad I get to go to season six. That makes me happy. Yeah. Um, but the writers are writing right now. And, you know, we're planning on going back to work this fall on the show. I know a lot of people are planning on going back to work. So that's that's the plan as of now. So we hope to have the show for you, you know, next, you know, April or May, I guess. That'll so for it. everybody who doesn't know this yet, Patrick Fabian plays yeah. Howard Hamlin yeah. on Better Call oh. Saul. Uh, it's a podcast. I do look like a politician who's about to say, like, <laughs> what, next well, here, I need here, your here's what was really great, guys. So I, Patrick and I tested this a little bit, and he's got the HHM background behind him. And I, I, I go, this is awesome. And he goes, do you want me to go get the suit? Would you like me to get the suit? I'll get the suit. I'll get the suit. Put the suit on. <laughs> and I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, please put the suit on. This will be fantastic. How much? How much do they give you? Uh, do you see the full episode each week, or do you see anything in the season coming up? Because I know in, like, the Marvel movies, they don't even give the pages to some people. Uh, they don't give the full script because they don't want anybody to know. Right, right, right. You know, we, we get the full script, although it, it is redacted quite a lot, especially as we started getting closer and, and more characters from Breaking Bad were being introduced. They just made it easy on us. They would just redact it, you know, because otherwise you'd be talking or, and you know, it might slip out that like, oh, so-and-so has come back. So-and-so is in the script. And so we got real good early on about talking around the show, and not talking about the show specifically. So I get a script. I read through it to make sure my name's in it so I'm not dead. And then I call Ray Seahorn and I say, you're not dead either. So we're good <laughs> for one more week. And then we go from there. I think I, I thought for sure you slipped up this past season when the uh when the, you i guess you instagrammed something and it was a picture of you out in the desert on the shoot for the episode where mike and saul are walking back through the desert right and I, he shouldn't be there why is howard out in the middle of this and then i checked you didn't direct it you didn't have anything to do i'm like that's a goof there's no reason for him to have been out there so there's something coming where you were in the desert right. so I, you were going to pick him up or there was some sort of connection where you called Saul and said, you know, I want to talk to you about that job. And he's like, do something for me first. I'm like, oh, this is a great little find. Turns out you were just there to watch. I was just there to watch. And you know what? That didn't occur to me because I knew I wasn't part of it. It didn't occur to me that there would be like that tea leaf reading. And of course there is a lot of things, um, but people think that I'm a director now. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the resume. Nobody's going to know. So, it's so, so, so how Patrick, much? Oh, go, oh, go, go ahead, ahead. John. No, 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 no. Oh, no. I'm, this is your fault, Frank. You caused this problem. No, I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted. Yeah. I, I tried to get him to watch the last dance a little bit. I, you wait till you find out. There's so much information that's going to make you even happier. So I, I asked him, "Can you watch a little bit of the last dance?" Because we're going to talk about that. So Scott actually gets to talk some, and then. Good. Uh, but then I, he says, "Look, there it is." Oh, get out Steelers of here! Fan. Really? <laughs> Huge Steelers fan. Are you really? Yeah. All right, when yeah. you're in Phoenix. Gotta come my brother, my brother and sister, my dad's from Pittsburgh. My, my brother still lives in, uh, in Murraysville, you know, out 220, a couple minutes down from downtown. And uh, I've been a Steeler fan since, look, I had Franco and AC Green on my wall. I had the Steeler sweatbands. Uh, as my wife of 11 years pointed out, um, I was wearing a Steeler hoodie um, that, okay, just, I digress. So I first meet her. You meet, you meet somebody and you, you want to impress them and stuff like that. So we're getting casual and I put on my, my, at the time, $75 Steeler hoodie that I got from the NFL shop. And she was like, huh, 
And uh, she goes, how much was that? And I'm like, $75. It was a real bargain. It's, it's the real good sweatshirt. And of course, she's like, you're a moron spending that much money on a sweatshirt. <laughs> However, guess what? This weekend, we're walking hand in hand, going for a walk. What am I wearing? That Steeler sweatshirt. It's a little rough around the cuffs. It looks a little belichick right now. But um, <laughs> she turned to me and she goes, I have to say, that sweatshirt's paying you now. So congratulations. It's so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much always here's what i love we have Shaq it's in the second pandemic. half of the episode Shaq oh. is in the second half of the episode here's john with Shaq. yeah yeah it's okay uh here's how i would have done it differently frank this is this is how you would have done the interview better uh patrick fabian oh my god because this is this look i already know Shaq's career i know how it started right. and ended i was there for the whole thing this Better Call Saul thing and Breaking Bad is just, it's, it's Breaking Bad is, is now uh, threatening to, in my world, at least in my opinion, to be the best show ever written. There are eight storylines where Breaking Bad was a linear show. Mm -hmm. This is eight avenues and it, it's a tree. It's a, it's, everything's different. Saul is just one component of what happens. And I don't know what happens to him, which is amazing on top of it all too. So you've got that. Right. I have a theory. Do you want to hear my theory? Frank, you want to yeah. hear my Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh -huh. the, another thing, we're thinking uh -huh. about doing this down the road. I'm going to have your theory, but I want I want Patrick to know we're thinking about doing an offshoot podcast called Better Call Paul, who's a guy Patrick who knows Paul. Oh, Patrick Paul knows Sura. Paul. Paul Sura, who is a name you may know. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, I know Paul. Paul, yeah. Paul donated. Paul's a big fan of the show, and he also donated to uh, an independent film I did, Driver X. He was a real great supporter of that as well. Yeah, he's a huge fan, and we go back and forth at work all the time. Um, you know, just kind of on Tuesdays, figuring out what just happened, who did what to who and all that. And he's been fantastic. He could write a fan fiction story as good as what's going on with Better Call Saul. It's just, you can't top what Vince Gilligan and, and everybody. No, those, look, those guys are great, you know, and I, I, I won't tell the complete story, but uh, two weeks before I had the audition for Better Call Saul, um, I got removed from a job. I hadn't booked the job. They put a pin in me for a job. Uh, it was called Dog with a Blog. It was on ABC Family where the dog is number one on the call sheet. And, um, <laughs> and I, I know Dog with a Blog. The, the dog talks at the, it's yeah, like no, the narrator. And by the way, the dog deserves to be number one. It's a really talented dog. And uh, <laughs> my friends were playing the parents on it. Like, I'm over 50. I've got a mortgage. The phone isn't ringing. I get an audition for this. And my ego, I shove my ego in my stomach. I go, I dance like a monkey. They say, we like you enough to put a pin in you, but not hire you. And then I wait like a, like a green actor, like a 21-year-old out of school, waiting for the phone to ring. The phone does not ring, and I call my agent, and I'm like, hey, so what about Dog with the Blog? And he's like, oh, he'd forgotten about it. He calls them, gets back to me in 30 seconds, and says, oh, yeah, that's gone. They went with the name of your name. And then I'm left staring into the void. <laughs> I don't know what to, I'm like, what? And then two weeks later, I got an audition for Better Call Saul. And I'm like, oh, right, okay, so if they're looking for a name of your name for Dog with the Blog, guess what? They're getting Brad Pitt for, for this. Right. So I'm completely like, there's no way I'm going to get this job. I go in because the casting directors uh, cast The Walking Dead. And I thought, oh, good. Maybe I'll get a three episode. I mean, that's where I was shooting for. So two weeks later, I get uh, that audition. I go in, I do it. Vincent Peter see the tape. Three weeks later, I get the job. And I'm like, um, that's an actor's life in a nutshell. I don't think I became a better actor in those four weeks. But in that <laughs> In that span of time, I was not good enough for Dog with the Blog, but I was good enough for Better Call Saul. So, but wow. what about the in the terms of the cadence with uh, with uh, Howard, and you would you wouldn't have been anything like that on uh, Dog with a Blog, right? <laughs> that would have been great, though. <laughs> little right. legal. Have you, have you seen my work? I do the I do one thing, and I do it well, and I just that's all I do. <laughs> What did on, we were we we did hot in Cleveland together? Were you part of the Siamese twins? Is that what you I, were? I, no, not Siamese. Let's not get uh, it's conjoined. 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 I'm conjoined sorry. Twin. It was Richard. Um, oh gosh, what's Richard's? Uh, Richard. I uh, remember his name. Great guy. He was on Desperate Housewives. He's worked forever and ever. We literally like two guys who look exactly like this who had never run into each other in the business, and that was sort of a miracle. And we ended up playing conjoined twins, the silliest thing that you could only get away with in a sitcom. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I, one of my favorite lines, it's still in my reel. At the very end, somebody comes in and sees that I'm cheating on her with my conjoined twin. We're on a double date. And she comes in and my wife discovers me. She goes, oh my God. She goes, I can't believe you're cheating on me. And I'm like, I'm conjoined. I'm not dead. And everybody laughs. And I was like, 
you know, I went to college for this. My father somewhere is having a small heart attack and a stroke saying, how can a man make a living doing this? You know, when I asked you about the way you talk, though, the, the, just the case, everything, you said something about your father. You, the, if you grew up with your father, that was. Yeah. A, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. My, my dad is one of the, the straightest arrows I know in terms of like he would never lie. He would always do right, uh, no matter what the cost. And uh, and so I think of Howard very much as being somebody who likes to think that he's like that. And my father, when he would do, we've all had those, you know, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed speeches. It would just devastate me like it does when you're a kid. And my father would do it. And I knew it was because he was coming from a place where he was irreproachable with his word and his character. Um, didn't lord it over me, but that's just who he was. That's how he went through the world. And I think Howard very much decides that he talks to everybody like he's not mad at them, but he's just a little disappointed in them. <laughs> But it's all just to hide Howard's insecurities, which you play off beautifully. Howard's attitude is all because he doesn't feel like he deserves it, which is well, amazing. That's, just, that, that, that's one theory, and I thought about that a lot. And I thought about, uh, especially with what happens to Chuck, uh, you know, the events that happened to Chuck and Chuck exiting the show and committing suicide and all that. Sorry, spoiler alert, uh, three years old. And, um, you know, Chuck, I mean, Jimmy takes one path and Howard takes another path. And surprisingly, Howard's the one that embraces therapy, digging into himself, letting it all hang out, and he comes through it on the other side. But what I love about these writers, and I, and I have to tip my hat completely because there is no show about this brain trust, is that like in season five, you see Howard sort of fully realized himself as this guy now, right? And he's, he's willing to see Jimmy on his own terms and his life on his own terms, and he has that lunch and he offers Jimmy the job. It's so genuine. But then when he hugs him at the valet, he gets into a Jaguar that has a namaste license plate yeah. on it. And I was He's like, still a that's dude. Howard. Right it's there. funny you say that because I saw that whole thing as Howard being less than genuine because he was so proud of himself for getting help. So his job now was to fix people. And I thought it was uh, such a subtle way of saying, I'm great, Howard. I did it right. I know a guy I could help. And then the namaste played as he drives off in that $200,000 car. And you're like, he's still a douchebag. And Jimmy yeah. sees, he sees the real side of people. I, 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 that's the thing I don't understand how actors can be so brilliant in a show with, with like your beekeepers. There's no uh, quick movement. You're all subtly moving through the script and things are changing so uh, at ease, but yet so drastically at the same time. And it's just a tribute to you and, directing and, and the writing. Thanks, well, and, you know, and the writers give us that time. You know, the writers give us that time and because Breaking Bad already existed, it allows the creative team to give it that space. So once the tone of Saul was sort of established as a slower burn, I mean, when you think about the trajectory of what's gone on, not a lot has gone on. And yet it feels so tense to watch Kim and watch the camera lay in on her or to lay in on Mike Emmertrout and see their eyes and wonder what's cranking behind them and stuff like that. And because of fans like you and people who are paying attention, it allows us all that. So, you know, we really lucked out with a great brain trust and a great fan base all the time. This feels like the, the most like real life of any TV show I've ever watched because of that speed. It feels like you're just going along at so much. I always say this about, uh, you know, cable shows versus network shows. Network shows are always really beautiful people, and they tell you everything they're going to do before they do it. It's basically yeah. the super friends with the announcer. Meanwhile, back at the Legion of Doom, Lex Luthor has a plan to take over the world. I have a plan to take over the world. But what they do on Better Call Saul is you – it'll take five, three, three to five minutes – and you won't know why it's happening, but Ermin Trout will have a plan, and it'll be laid out, and people will be like, I don't know why he did this. Two episodes later, you find out exactly why he did it, or at the end of the episode. And that's, that's what I love about the show. I think it, some people, it might turn off. They don't get it, and they don't want to follow and spend the time. I would rather spend the time because I just love all the characters so much. It's hard to drop into something like this, I think. I think, uh, you know, Breaking Bad caught on in season three because all of a sudden Netflix and binging became something. So... You could catch up and you could catch up pretty fast. You could catch up in a weekend. And uh, I don't know about you, but you know, I, I ate them like that. I binged it. I missed it the first time around because we were raising kids and I was watching Clifford the Big Red Dog. You know, I can talk about that and My Little Pony extensively, but I missed Breaking Bad and it's when it first happened. So I ate it binge wise. And when you can do that, then the ability to go ahead and restart Saul and jump and, and, and watch it is great. 
But if you're just jumping in like, oh, my friends are talking about it, I think I'll watch Monday, you're gonna be lost. You're gonna be wondering what's wrong with your friend. You're not gonna get it. You have to build your capital up on this show, I think, in that respect. But I think most people have because of that, because they get drawn into the real life aspect of it. I think we can all relate to one of the other characters about what they're going through, hope streams being broken in a very much realistic fashion, as opposed to, as you pointed out, like on network where it gets resolved like in, in, in a week or like a magic thing happens. Always Instead has a bow tied on it. And it's just, so John, one more better call Saul question. Cause we'll have to have Patrick on oh, to do yeah. like a full episode. This was just my little treat for you. It's to see. pretty great. I can't I appreciate believe how, I can't believe how long your mouth was open for people. I, was have thrilled. To go to the YouTube. I, I thought, I thought it was one of those things you buy and he does a, like a <laughs> thing. And then we had like a minute of him just saying, and happy birthday, John. I'm very happy to <laughs> You My thought daughter. it was a cameo? Yeah, a cameo. That's what it's called. Not Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> Tell John, a happy birthday from me, Patrick Baby. And I'm like, oh, this is great. And then it was just going to disappear. And he started talking to me and stuff. It was Wait great. a second. Think about this. Do you know the amount of technology that would have had to go gone into that? For you me to it. set that up and make that happen? You think between <laughs> me and Toledo on a first attempt, that's Look, going to work? Amazing. More, right. more of a chance of that than what actually occurred. Uh -huh. I was curious when you mentioned Clifford the Big Red Dog, if you'd ever seen Clifford the Big Red Dog with a blog, because it's fantastic. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the other thing I, I, I love wanna... the guy who was going to play the dad in that. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the only question I have for Better Call Saul is, well, it's not a question. Uh, I have a feeling that Kim is going to try, try and ruin Howard. Jimmy's going to be the one who tries and stops her, but she's completely gone. She's gone Saul before him. And she's going to steal his sandpiper money that you took, my friend, in some sort of under... Yeah, you owe him the percentage, <laughs> but you took the whole sandpiper thing. So Kim's going to realize, I can walk with this money, destroy Jimmy, and break his heart that the only person he ever trusted uh, took you down, took what's rightfully his, and then just disappeared. And that's why he becomes who he becomes in Breaking Bad, which is don't care about anybody, don't have an opinion, never mention my past, and I do, it's all jokes. And, and that's what breaks off that. Do you think you die, or do you want to die? After you wait, 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 so Kim... <laughs> yeah, it's a great idea. Oh, I, 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 this, is every, this is every podcast with them, these yeah. theories that we bring on experts in the field, and some of them are right, some of them are like what you just did, like, Give me yeah. a second. I need oh, to I have. That. I know what happened in the last episode of the last season completely. When Gus turns at the end of that thing with Airman Trout, and he says, uh, uh, I have the best men in the world on this job, but they don't have one thing, and that's a man inside. His eyes changed. And I know for a fact the whole season next year is going to start with Gus called off the A team, threw the B team in there in case it went south like it did so they could blame Nacho the whole way. That explains uh, – Jimmy's first line, Saul's first lines of Breaking Bad, which is, who sent you? Ignacio? It was Ignacio. Was it Lalo? Because when he says that, he's, he's still under the idea that the whole uh, breakdown of Lalo was Nacho's fault. Oh, I'm so in this. It's ridiculous. John, I'm going to have to Ermin Trouch. Okay. Come on. All right. Seth. All right. That's enough, John. That's enough. <laughs> we could do all Ermin Trout shows. <laughs> Last thing I need to do right now is listen to you, Walter. Oh, all goddamn day. Patrick, I'm going to buy you a ticket. Come out. I've got a bedroom, a small well. You can live in the well for a little while. I'll feed you with a bucket. It'll be great. He's that's, actually, that's John is actually fun. in a Pittsburgh Steelers field house right now. Yeah. His yeah. bathroom. You should take him on a tour of the bathroom quickly. Everything. Like, this is, first things first, this is my back patio. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Down that's a little bit. Down a little bit. Oh, is it right there? Yeah, good. That's nice. It's got do it's oh, got bird food okay. on it. Yeah. Perfect, nice. Wow. Yeah, wow. everything. Steelers thing. But wait, when we get into the bathroom, it gets weird. There's my Heinz Ward. My dark I got board. that. He's got. I got that. Got that. Got it. Got it. Yep. This yep. is yep. right now. This is the restroom. Wow. My, uh, Steelers bar. Oh. Yeah, I have a sickness for the Steelers, and and you know what's funny? The other half of it's about to be better call Saul. So <laughs> this room's about to get weird. Nobody's ever started a better call Saul bar before. Well, not, not, in, not in conjunction. I will send you swag. I'll send you big posters of me, if nothing else. <laughs> can, we, we, can, can, we, can we get that? We'll put that in the podcast studio. Absolutely. Yes. 100%. We're going to need multiples. And now I'm a little jealous that you're sending him stuff before you've offered. Hey, I'm the one who's got Gus. Is there a Howard? I've got Gus, Jimmy. No Howard yet. I've got Gus, Jimmy, and Ermin Trout. I was Ermin, getting for the studio. Ermin, I was like the best. Oh, you got that for the studio. Yeah, and it came right. today.
funny enough, my surprise to you was my uh, Salamanca bobblehead, and you bring you bring carbon-based life form Howard to the party. I Actual didn't really... uh, Howard Hamlin. Stick around, stick around, Patrick. Uh, we're going to talk a, a little bit about. Um, he's got a Shaq story. Before we get into Shaq, we have another guest in this episode. Uh, if you have any questions while we're talking about uh, the last dance, we'll just get into a little bit of that so Scott doesn't feel like he completely. Well, can I ask one question? I mean, yeah, you have gave... you watched the show? Uh, do you know Better Call Saul at all? Well, I'm very similar to how Patrick was. I have children that I'm raising. I can't just watch every show. So I haven't. But what I'm excited about is, since you did this for John, next week, are you going to have Regan Burns, the dad from Dog oh, with dog. the Ball on? I, I used to play ball. I know him. He's great. <laughs> so he's very good. No, he's really good. And honestly, you know, I got the audition for the blog. Sorry, Patrick. Did that just come out? I need to get that. Oh, my oh God. My. Fantastic. Come on. I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is... No, you have to. It's, it's <laughs> no, the only way to communicate. No, do, now, Patrick, when you watch someone who gets a job that you thought you were going to get, is it better when they're better at it than you maybe would have been? Or is it better to watch them and go, I would have been so much better? How Are do you, you asking, do they want it, does he want to put a pin in that person? <laughs> possibly, yeah, like a voodoo doll, sure. Yeah. Oh, you know, it cut... Uh, part of being able to be have a long-term career is being able to handle the fact that you're not going to get every job, even the jobs you think you really ought to, even the ones that make superstars out of other people. Because, and this is the way I go for it, um, like uh, we all audition for friends. When friends, but the right people got friends. If Patrick Fabian had been in Friends in the original cast, who's to say that the chemistry would have been off and it wouldn't have been friends? So, who, who did you audition for? What part? All of them? Chandler. Oh, Chandler. Chandler. Yeah, but by the Chandler. way, I think that was already his part to begin with. And who knows? But at, you know, at the time, we all think we have a running shot. And you never, you, if you get in the room, you have a shot. But uh, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, uh, to your point, Scott, you'll go crazy. You'll go crazy if you watch stuff and you go, oh, there's some, you know, I'm sure there's a couple of things along the way where I'm just like, wow, that would have been sweet. Or I would have been better. But you know right. what? Uh, it's worked out okay. So I'm not going to be bitter about that sort of thing. I, I worked with I worked with a woman who was uh, she was Pivot, a media here in like I don't know two thousand or something, and uh, she told me that she was she had lost out to Kathy Griffin in the Suddenly Susan TV show, and I had said to her, um, well at least she was you know she was really good in the role at least she was the best person I thought on the show you know because Brooke Shields was a little stiff for comedy. And then I find out an hour later that Brooke Shields is her best friend. So I not only insulted her <laughs> on two levels, I basically said, well, you're probably, you know, Kathy Griffin's great. And I said that her best friend uh, is not good oh. in the roles. Once again, why I'm not asking a lot of questions on podcasts. Okay, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go back to you guys' show. Know the room. Know the room. <laughs> know the room. I was young. It was stupid. 20 Everybody years ago. Everybody can't go into the taxi auditions is Louis De Palma. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Changes. Well, I always ask this question to actors who I think have, you know, had these, these long storied careers and become the Patrick Fabians of the world. We're like, it's Howard, but the Patrick Fabian part's still tough for people to know. If you could go back and, t and as, a, as an actor, it doesn't matter. It's not an audition. It's not anything. What role from any movie would you plug yourself in and say, man, I would love a shot at that? To have oh, been. Only because it was completely career changing for him. Uh, I make the joke always that we all wanted to be Brad Pitt in the beginning, right? But there was only uh, one available actor for that role, and he's still playing it rather well. But <laughs> I, but that that role in Thelma and Louise made him from just a, a kind of a good guy that everybody knew who was could have, kind of a good actor. It literally overnight changed everything from him. As James Spader, I think, said in, in an interview, he said, you know, we were all drinking scotch and smoking cigarettes till 3 a.m. having a good goddamn time. And then Brad Pitt showed his abs in Thelma and Louise and we started to have to drink green juice and go to the fucking gym. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure Spader ever did that, though, looking at uh, the last... Like, like he the... chose a different path, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he stayed yeah. on his path. 
Well, I, you know what? I, I have to ask this too. Do you feel the role of Howard Hamlin's changing things for you? Because when, when, I, when I mentioned you, we talked about you to Harlan Coben, uh, which is an episode coming up later this week. Uh, he later texted me and said, wait a second, Patrick Fabian is Howard Hamlin in uh, Better Call Saul. And he goes, he's fantastic. I'm like, he's been in like 150 things. He goes, not like this. And it was one of those things where it like, People go like, are people noticing you for this role more? Because I, and I mean nothing offensive by this at all. But no, you, you, but you're one of those guys that can play. You might always have a similar way of talking and stuff like that, like you said as a joke. But you're one of those guys who just you're kind of you're there a lot. You're good. You're really good. But you're good to the point where pe you blend into the show a lot, right? You're not you're not milking it. You're not. Uh, chewing the scenery. You're not trying to be the person. Everybody's people go. Patrick Fabian's a really good actor. Put him in that spot. But with this, I, and I don't think you're chewing the scenery. But you are like when it comes to you, it's Howard moments and Howard steals. The, yeah. I remember I texted you or it DM'd you on Twitter that when you came down the stairs that one in that episode that uh, walk down the stairs. Did you plan walk. that walk? What's that? You sauntered down the stairs. You remember that? Like, yeah. Did you plan that saunter or did that just happen or was that? You know, the, there's a lot of good moments that that show provides that you, you end up seeing afterwards. You're like, oh, that really worked. But that's because they've got a real good feel on set and a real respect for the energy that's being sort of, you know, it, it's making magic potions, right? And then every now and then you get to catch it. And that's one of those moments that we caught it really well. Happy accident. And then do you... So do you do you feel like the Howard Hamlin character is changing some things for you? Like like people are like, I get recognized a lot more as Howard as opposed to I used to call it the St. Louis Airport problem, where I'd be going through the St. Louis Airport and someone would go, Hey, 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 did we go? Do we go to high school together? And I'm like, uh, No, and I and I can tell where we're going, but at least I'll be like, No, where did you go to school? In Pennsylvania. And then finally, I'll be like, Well, I'm uh, I'm an actor. You probably saw me on TV. And they'll be like, Oh, oh, oh. Well, what did I see you in? And then at that moment, I'm, I'm left being the Terminator going, age, sex, what's going on? I'm like, did you see me in Xena, the warrior princess? Nope, that's not it. Okay. Uh, um, did you see me in Friends? Nope, that's not it. Oh, okay. So then I'm in the St. Louis airport because I'm so broken emotionally going through my resume because I want to satisfy the person to know where I'm from. And I literally would go through like 20 credits and finally get done like, oh, no. You're the Bellin guy from Green Bay doing the hospital thing. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> now it's changed to like, I'm in New York City, I guess uh, just last spring. And I'm in Central Park and some guy, some New Yorkers, headphones on, he's jogging. And I hear this scream about 25 feet away from me. He goes, hey, Howard. And I look over and he goes, yeah, I'm talking to you. You get off Kim's back. You understand me? I said, okay, I will. And he goes, when's the show coming back? I said, I don't know. He goes, okay, Howard, okay. Didn't break stride, didn't take his headphones off, shouted the whole time and kept moving. And I thought, oh, okay, I guess I've, uh, I've made it a little bit, but I'm getting screamed out on the street in character, you know? All right. We gotta get a, we gotta get to Shaq in a little bit here, Scott. I wanted you to be excited about Last Dance. You, you can lead some Last Dance talk. Anything that really uh, st stood out to you, Scott? So you have a part in the show. <laughs> I'm just excited that John Slattery is finally on the show with us. John, j is that who people are? You go to the same, like, uh, is it John Slattery, the guy from Mad Men? I could see yes, that those yes. guys yes. would be up for the same roles because they talk fast. They seem smarter than you. Uh, just, okay. Uh, you know what, back to the last dance. Okay, you got it. Okay. We'll probably cut that part anyway, Scott. Yeah, good. <laughs> we'll Thanks. Glad I, glad I built you up for this part of the show. Well, you didn't even tell me we were going to talk about the last dance. And I didn't watch the last two. Oh, episodes. you didn't watch it yet? Oh, well, then no, let's just skip I, until next time. I just figured you yeah, didn't watch it. Was there something you wanted again? I just want you to be like, feel like you're. Oh, no, it's okay. I was great in the Shaq <laughs> interview. He talks about my porn name the whole time. You know? oh, Shaq does that. I don't want to tell people what's coming up. Yeah. No, no, no. What just happened? I didn't do it. I don't know. I, th I feel like we're all staggering like we've been hanging out with Jacques Vaughn in the shower. That's all I can say. <laughs> Pretty great. All right. Cut, so cut that up. We're going to get to the Shaq interview here in a second. You had a Shaq story that we were talking about beforehand, Patrick? Oh, yeah, because show business is weird and fun. So I did a pilot 
I, I can't, uh, and honestly, I've been, I'm old enough that I've been around. I'm not sure what it was, but we were hold in on, a show. I, hold on, Shaq with a blog? <laughs> <laughs> and Shaq was number one on the call sheet. That's the thing, right? <laughs> um, and uh, our producer, uh, it was Christmas time, and often in the business, as a tradition, you'll get some sort of swag with your show on it, right? It'll be like, you know, hey, this season one, and it'll be a, a fleece or a lunchbox or, you know, something cool, or, and it'll show... It'll show directly how much faith the producers have in you coming back in the spring, really. Is it a good fleece? Is it a good rock concert t-shirt? Or is it the shitty one that you're <laughs> buying outside the venue, right? So I was doing this pilot and all of a sudden it's Christmas time and everybody's excited. And producer's like, hey, congratulations. Everybody go to the table and grab something on the way out. Merry Christmas. We love you guys. We're like, Wee! and it's a bag and it's a dark bag and I can't quite tell. And we're like, yeah, we're going to open it up later on. We're not going to pull it up right now. And we get out and we start walking out of the studio. We start opening the bag. First of all, we realize the bag is, is a bag that says, you know, steel. I'm like, steel? That's not the name of our show. That's interesting. And then we open it up. And it's clearly all the extra swag they had that they did not get rid of for Shaq's movie, Steel. And so I've got like a steel mug and I've got a steel fleece and a steel scarf. And I was like, oh, and as I drove to my car, I was like, oh, we're not coming back, are we? Sure enough, we weren't. Do, do you still have that stuff? No. Oh, I, I was going to ask you to send it to so me. So sorry, I did. <laughs> but I still have my Xena Warrior Princess vest <laughs> it works very well from 1998. So there you go. That's that's one. That's my oldest thing. Well, this is awesome. I'm I'm so glad. I, I, I'm worried about Scott and his sanity. But uh, no, well, no, it's great. You can. Hey, I do have a good question. Hopefully, yeah. I've always believed that Bob Odenkirk is so great at being such a team player on a show because the first time I ever saw him, I was at Second City in Chicago. I didn't know uh -huh. who he was. Tim Meadows, I didn't know who he was. Chris Farley was live. It was for Saturday Night Live. He dominated every sketch so much, including Matt Foley, which Bob Odenkirk wrote, to the point where everyone else was invisible. Chris Farley dominated a live room more than any stand-up comedian I've ever seen. So if you start off, he was working with Michael Jordan, and he, was, he looks like Judd Bushler comparatively, even though he's this amazing talent, Bob Odenkirk. So it just makes me think when he walked on these other shows, he's more giving than most, I think, comedians are who want to be the star of the show. I think Bob- That was a, that was a question? <laughs> no, no, it is, it is. No, yeah, Bob, Bob has always been, at least in my experience, for the show, the best for the scene, regardless of whether it shines a spotlight on him. Obviously being Saul, he's the main character, he knows that, but. His hat on here, even though he's a writer, because he stays out of the writer's way, even though he's directed before, he stays out of the director's way. He's produced before, he stays out of the producer's way. He wears his actor hat, and uh, so he takes the stuff that comes in. Now, of course, if he has suggestions, they're gonna, they're gonna listen. But in terms of him working and giving, absolutely. I've seen, him, I've seen him work a scene where the directors wanted to focus on his face, and instead, he's like, no, the scene's about Ray's reaction. The, wow. the, 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 the story is actually over here and he'll gently make sure they get coverage. And sure enough, you'll see it in the final product that, oh, right, when you're in the editing bay, you realize it's not about him. So that's great. Um, I've told him though, you know, he's expanded from being, you know, a writer, Saturday Night Live, doing improv, doing stand up, and he had all those stand up improv friends. And they're all, they're all, you know, crabs in a bucket. They want you all to be there and they don't really want you to get successful, right? So he's gotten successful and now he's on a hit show. Now he's an actor and getting Emmy nominated and all that stuff. And I'm like, you know, some of those guys and gals who you used to write with, I'm sure are like, uh, you know, screw him. Are you kidding me? You know, he's an actor. He's serious. David Cross, I'm sure has been, you know, loyal, loyal, loyal. But Bob has made an action film that is going to come out next year. And it's, I saw the trailer, it looks so good. And I warned him, I said, you know, when this hits and it's gonna hit, you're gonna lose all of your comic friends. No one will want to talk to you. <laughs> They'll put up with you getting an Emmy nomination, but they will not put up with you becoming an action star. I said, but I'll be there, I'll be your pal. So, you know. what, a, what, what an amazing answer to a brilliant question. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, but thanks you so need much. to put a question mark That's at right. the end of your questions. 
Scott. That's the first part. No, it's the it's the key to a good interview. You ask every question you've ever <laughs> had in like eight hours. And of course, Patrick's going to shine. He just picks one. That's about it. Pick something to comment on. I, I have to say this. I have to say, Scott, when you took all the glasses and stuff off, you look like a serendipitous, healthy version of Haley Joel Osment if you ever hit a treadmill. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, no. <laughs> he, looks, he, he looks like a better Haley Joel Osment. That's what I mean. I know, I know, I know, I know. The healthier. It's, it's, I mean, it's so funny to me because I just pictured if you pumped up parts of your face, you could be current Haley Joel Osment. <laughs> We're oh, so good to each God. other. This has uh, been all. Well, Patrick, that's incredible. Thank you for surprising me. And Frank, you, thank you for doing that too. I think that's awesome. Absolutely. He knows it. I'm a, I'm, I don't get super fanny over much stuff. I think special is special. This show is, is beyond great as far as art, entertainment, acting, writing, all that. And I just, man, it's appreciated. So pass the word on. I know you guys get enough accolades, but it's, I don't think you understand how much it, it, uh, it gives to people. It's amazing. Which is great because the second half Thank of the you, show, man. the Shaq I I interview is very similar. It's, yeah. Uh, all same question Scott had. <laughs> Scott asked that question. same long question. <laughs> Long's uh, not just last name, it's his uh, interview uh, stuff. Oh, no, this was great. I'm so glad. Uh, I, I Let, let's this. count the seconds of your first question that you asked, John. It was about three no. minutes long on every I character take it. of this take show. It. it was amazing. No. So the they, it's beautiful. Uh, it was a rundown. <laughs> it was a rundown. <laughs> You did, you did, you, you did have a synopsis, but yeah, yeah. got to set it up. It's inside the actor studio. You guys wouldn't understand. Only Patrick yeah. and I can. Remember. So uh, Toledo, <laughs> to lead into Shaq here, do we have to do anything? He's our producer, uh, Patrick. Because we, I, I, I expected this to go ten minutes, but it got way too yeah. interesting. Oops. This Oops. was a Ladies show. And Shaquille O'Neal, Patrick, thank you. That's it. We're done. Absolutely. Uh, Oh, it's, it's, I was worried here. I'm going to actually, I'm going to be honest with you. We could throw this at the end of the episode too, Toledo. I was worried, John, you were going to get upset. Not upset. <laughs> Why? Like flustered because I threw something at you. No. You're like, I, and I, I mean, I, you know, just like, why didn't you tell me kind of, not like, an, uh, not like upset, but just kind of like, oh, I, I, but it, apparently you don't even need to plan. You've been planning for a while. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, I have, I, I did the, uh, the Breaking Bad tour when I went to Albuquerque. Oh yeah. I, not, I didn't go to Albuquerque for that. I lived in Albuquerque when I was little. My brother-in-law's there. We went up and visited. And that Breaking Bad tour, for as schlocky and weird as it is, is mm -hmm. super entertaining and fun for fans. I, the owners, but, they're all, they're great people. Yeah, they really are. And it was really fun and well done. And and uh, we had a blast. It took us all over. So, yeah, I, Albuquerque is not some place I ever want to visit again. But I tell people if you happen to get stuck there. Hop on the bus and drive around because it's it's really worth it. It's fun. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That's no. I've been prepping. Do you ever get out to Phoenix, Patrick? I only been, I've been to Phoenix Airport. That's it. Oh yeah, to get to go through somewhere. Well, you need to come out for a Steelers game because every Sunday, Thursday night, Monday, whenever the games are, this place packs up. We take the walls off this building and and uh, have like thirty people over and just do Steeler parties here every every game. So you're more than welcome. <laughs> September 14th, they're at the opener against the Giants. I don't know who's going to be watching. Mean, I'll be watching as long as they're playing. Monday Night Football. There'll be 25, 30 people in this house every time. Steelers go nuts here. I don't, know, how, I don't know about the legalities, legalities of that anymore, John. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, there's there's yeah, plenty yeah. of room. We'll keep them across from us. We, I got bubble wrap. I got all sorts <laughs> of lights. Do you have, do you have plastic <laughs> dividers? Yeah. <laughs> With Steeler <laughs> emblems on them? We all wear our Steelers shields. It's great. Don't you see the mask? Uh, if you go to pittsburghsteeler.com, they've got the COVID masks yep. with the logos. I'll probably have one. That's the that's the new rock and roll band shirt. Is that that's right. everybody's going to have their um, yes. going to have their mask. All right, now the Shack interview. Toledo yeah. can play it at any time he wants. We'll just here's what just, we're going to do throughout the Shack interview. We're going to cut back to <laughs> moments with Patrick. Best of moments from this was fantastic, Patrick. Uh, really? Uh, do people call you Patrick or Pat? Uh, 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 Patrick. Unless I grew up with you in Pennsylvania, everybody from Central Pennsylvania goes, "Hi, Pat." And I'm like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> At least you know where they're from. Uh, All yeah, right, yeah, the, no mistake in that. Yeah, might that be blew off the, the, the big the big name. Yeah, but it's the the super to, that goes on to its own soup his own super fame. That's uh, there you go. Awesome. All right, man. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Pat. Pleasure, sir.
Betty. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I can't hit the button right. Now I leave. <laughs> <laughs>